<laughs> non-legit. This is this is the banjo minnow. <laughs> oh Lord of mercy, you got to turn the hat around on this one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, what is going on everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. In today's episode, we're going to be doing what's called a tier list. Now, if you all are not avid YouTube watchers, you might not have seen this trend before on the YouTubes. But what you do is you take a list of things. I don't care if we're talking deli meats or cereals or YouTuber products. And you take those things and you put them in a list of best to worst. And so today we're going to be tier list ranking every fishing lure category. I know this is definitely different than what I usually do on my channel, but I wanted to have some fun with you guys today. And of course, if you disagree with some of the tier list rankings of the fishing lures that I have, make sure you guys are putting those in the description. I want this to be a crazy comment section full of arguments down there. But in order to make this video more fun for you guys and myself, I'm not ranking these lures alone. I'm ranking these lures with my good friend and fellow YouTuber, the old Tennessee bearded boy, Mr. Alex Rudd. Alex, say hello to all the folks at home. Hello, folks at home. Here I am. Are you excited? I'm, dude, I'm jacked up about this. I, I, I'll be <laughs> honest, I, I have no idea like what I've got myself into. I just agreed to this, and here we are, and we're going to figure it all out together, and it's going to be great. So, woo! It's going to be a, a ton of fun. We are currently, of course, in two separate places. He's in Tennessee. I'm in Texas. Mm -hmm. We have headphones in with a phone, with the, my computer, and cameras. It is a... Uh, a crazy smorgasbord of things going on. But we're gonna log on to tiermaker.com. We're gonna hop onto bass fishing lures. Alex, you can see my screen, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so the way this tier list is gonna work, Alex, is we're gonna tier list these videos, these videos, these lures, by three different categories. First one being fun. And I guess, you know what, we should explain to people at home what the, 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 the tiers are. So you start with D tier, that's the bottom tier. No, no good. These lures are, are uh, I guess you'll, we'll explain in the category. Dog water here, is what that stands for. Dog water. Is, is that after, does it actually stand for dog water? I have no idea. But uh, D, a D or Dookie. Dookie or dog water or, or downright dis, disrespectful. Uh, category C is for uh, crap. <laughs> category B, of course. And we can work our way up all the way to A. To a and then above A, we're going to see if any lures, if, if Alex and I can agree on some of these. Uh, they are S for superior, I'm guessing, right? Super. Awesome. Super. Yes. Sure. Stupendous. Those are the tiers you guys can see from my screen right now, and we're going to put Alex and I in the two corners, and we're going to get to ranking these lures. We are ranking these based on three different uh, factors. One, fun. So how fun they are to throw. Two is usefulness. So, you know, when you're trying to catch bass, how useful is this lure really? You know, I, I know every lure can be useful in some situations, but how useful is this lure? And then three, consistency. Can this lure be applied all around the country to catch bass no matter where you live and no matter what type of bass you are going for? And so, Alex, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's, let's do I, I've never been more excited for something in a, my whole entire life, if you can't tell. So let's <laughs> Man, get after that, it. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of expectations here to have. Lure number one in the tier list is going to be the Alabama rig. So, mm. you know what, in, in terms of fun. It's fun. I think it's, dude. It's I a, think it's really fun. It's an extreme amount of fun. I mean like, they pile drive an Alabama rig like they don't pile drive anything else. And so fun, it is definitely up there. Um, usefulness, it's, I would say for me anyway, it's very, very useful. I mean, it's one of those tools that you can keep tied on for I don't know, nine months out of the year, probably 12 months out of the year if you really wanted to and catch a lot of fish on it. Yeah. Um, so definitely fun and usefulness right up there together. Uh-huh. Um, consistency throughout the country. I've never seen a place that doesn't work. That's true, but is it consistent across the country across, like throughout the entire year? Well, I mean, like, can it, can you just can you just rip an A rig out of your tackle box and go to slam a bass? Uh, um, that's a hard question to answer. I mean, yeah, you could mm -hmm. maybe, depending on where you're at. You know, obviously, you go up north, you got hard water for several months out of the year, so it's not very useful. But I don't think we're really counting that into the into the tiering system here. Um, gotcha. I, I'm gonna go with it's probably not the most useful tool all across the entire no. country there's definitely tools yeah. that i've seen that work like way up north in northern michigan a lot better than an alabama rig does down here during certain times of year so i would go with fun it's really high um usefulness across the country and eh, or i mean useful usefulness period 
pretty high. And the consistency across the country, eh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so does that that obviously doesn't land it in S tier. No. But I, where is it riding in terms? I mean, the I we I guess we don't know how much you know each of these thing factors factor in. So it, it's fun and the most important and down the line because I know that the fun on an A rig you can catch multiple fish. Does that make it an A or does the other two drag it down to a B? Man, I want to put it in a B, and let me tell you why I'm okay. going to put it in a B. Because it's yeah. not as accessible to everybody across the country due to laws. There's mm. laws around that Alabama rig where there's certain parts of the country you can only have one hook on it. So it drops true, true. the usefulness down and the consistency down a whole lot where it would be different, you know, even in Texas to Alabama or Alabama to Tennessee. So I'm going to put it at a solid B. I had not thought about that, and you know what? I was going to either put it in A or B, and the and also the expensive factor of it that a mm. lot of people out there don't want to spend yeah. twenty five dollars putting together an Alabama rig. So for that reason, folks, we're going to put Alabama rig in the B tier. Now these are kind of jumbled. We go from one uh, very legit lure—you got to really learn how to throw the A rig—to one <laughs> non-legit. This is this is the banjo minnow. <laughs> oh Lord of mercy! You got to turn the hat around on this one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, so Banjo Minnow, for those of y'all who have not followed uh, the TV trends for years and years, that was an as-seen-on-TV uh, product. I feel like everybody should know what the Banjo Minnow is at this point, and if you haven't, search it on YouTube. Uh, I've never personally thrown a Banjo Minnow. Have you thrown I've never. Banjo I've never even put my hands on a Banjo Minnow. Like. So, so I haven't either. And, and for that case, uh, I, I can't imagine it's much fun or else it would have sold better. Yeah, and, and it can't be very Me. useful or it would have caught every <laughs> fish in the lake. I'm going D tier just right off the back with this one. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Banjo Minnow. You are a D tier lure. Now, of course, if you guys disagree with Alex and I, you feel free to put that in the comments section below. Uh, all right, lure number three, we have big curly tail worm. Mm. So I think in terms of fun, this is about bottom of the barrel. Oh, man, really? You think that it's fun to let that thing sink to the bottom and drag it down? Okay, there? well, I have a very different experience with big worms than you do. Okay, okay, will, tell I me will, about it. I will take like old monsters and bull worms and those giant like power bait worms and I'll flip them. And so, like, okay. we'll flip really shallow grass with like 20 pound fluorocarbon and big heavy <laughs> rods and jack their face in shallow water with them. But also, there has been times that I've been on the Tennessee River that you're on a school of four and five pounders that you let that worm sink down there and it goes donk and every single one of them's big ones. So I, I think there's definitely some bias here because of my experience with the big worm. I'm going to have to put it up there as far as like fun. It's, it's pretty high for me. But, okay. But usefulness and consistency throughout the entire year is like not even there at all for me because no, it's not. It's literally like a June, July, August thing, and then I'm just I'm done with it. Like it doesn't work like it does in those months. So exactly. Yeah. Yep. I I would totally agree, especially for a lot of people. I mean, they work well in ponds, mm -hmm. but I found that if you're just trying to catch fish in ponds, and especially let's go with smallmouth and spotted bass, mm -hmm. a big curly worm is just not a useful. A technique for the majority of the year. A, mm -hmm. When it's on, it's on, mm -hmm. like you said. But I don't think it. I don't think it belongs up there. I, I'm gonna stick it in a C. Okay, I can. I can. Or, or, I can live with that. You I can, can live, live with that. I can live with. It. I would say B, but I'm gonna go C tier just because it isn't for everybody and everybody's experiences. It's definitely not up there, like with the most consistent and or useful bait in most. I would say like 90% of situations. So C tier is good with me. Got yeah, Okay, cool. Let's go with C tier. Now, now switching around to something that you work quite a bit faster, we have the Buzz Toad. Ooh. The top water soft plastic Buzz Toad. Yeah. And, and, and I have a lot of really fun memories throwing a Buzz Toad. Yeah. So, most of the time, way more fun top water bites than an actual like regular hollow bellied frog. See, yeah, that's where I, I, we're going to go totally opposite on that one, but okay. Really? Oh, dude, yeah, like, I love a buzz toad. It's cool bait. I can count on both hands the amount of times that I've got on a consistent bite with a buzz toad that wasn't attached okay. to a buzz bait, and, but I can't tell you how many fish I've caught on a hollow belly frog. Now, fun factor here, 
we're going. That's, that's what I was referring to. Off the charts with Fun Factor. Because it's yeah, top yeah. water. I think every top water bait on this list is going to be Fun Factor off the charts. <laughs> um, true, true. I, dude, I just don't have a, a tremendous amount of experience to say that it's like, for me, a super consistent bait over, say, a buzz bait or a frog, which are both on the list and one's coming up. Um, yeah, and you know what? The, yeah, the more that I think about it, it's not been consistent for me either. Mm -hmm. The bites stick out in my head because they were like jerked a rod out of your hand sort of thing. Yes. But I don't, yeah, you're right. I don't think it's consistent, especially really a lot of these top waters are going to struggle with consistency all year round because the top waters are not all year round lures unless you live in Florida. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I think for that fact, I would put the hollow belly in, and not the hollow belly, the, the buzz toad because of the lack of consistency in a C. I, I want to go C tier, yeah. Okay, C yeah. tier. Now, it's going to be hard for us to put anything in D because Banjo Minnow's in there. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, there's... I'm looking down the list here. I mean, like, we got some really good stuff. Um, there's one that I want to put in D tier for the simple fact of it just sucks to throw it, but we'll get there when we get there. All right, so moving on, we have the buzz bait. Very similar, well, actually, not very similar. Similar application to the buzz toad. But uh, well, do you think this differs at all in the category of tier list from the buzz toad? I don't because, again, I can count on two hands the amount of times that I've got on a soup. Here's what amazes me about the buzz bait is its popularity within the ma like the major league fishing segment of fishing guys like pros. It amazes me because I've never caught fish on a buzz bait as consistently as they do, and maybe I'm doing something wrong. But like for me, dude, it is right there with the buzz toad in like amount of fun, but like this totally inconsistent as far as bites yeah. for me. So I agree. It, did you watch Gerald Swindle almost win the Elite on a buzz bait? I did, and that fascinated me. Like, it makes me want to get buzz baits and figure them out and, like, figure out I know. what I'm doing wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong. I mean, because I feel like I'm fishing them in the right spots and doing the right things with them. I just can't get on the bite with them. It's weird. Yep. I know. I, I, I've had a... Oh, oh, man, I had one really good day. One of the best days of fishing I ever had. I wasn't recording. And uh, I had 27 pounds with a buddy of mine in the middle of the day... On July 7th Whew. in Texas, it was, it was 103 degrees outside on bluff walls with a buzz bait. That's wild. It made, it made absolutely zero sense, but still for that fact, I think it still belongs in C tier. Uh, absolutely. I'm going that too. C tier. All right, we now we literally from... just made about 150 people so mad they can't see straight with that, with that listing right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, let's see. Carolina Rig is the uh, next one. <laughs> and as y'all can see from the screen recording, some of the uh, lure depictions here are from Tackle Warehouse, and a lot of them are just random Google images. So this is some janky drawing that probably one of Alex's fourth graders did. Absolutely. Of, uh, of, Absolutely. A, of a Carolina Rig. Yeah. Now, Carolina Rig, if we're, if we're going to go by the, the three uh, factors here, now, are we looking at fun in terms of catching them? Like how fun it is or how fun it is to actually work the lure? Okay, I'm going with, with, with how fun it is to work the lure first because that's what you do 90% of the time. Yeah. Catching them and hooking them is a whole different ball game, right? Um, yeah. Listen, the Carolina rig is a fun sucker. <laughs> Look, there is nothing I despise more than dragging a Carolina rig. Yeah. Now, that being said... It is probably one of the most consistent and probably one of the most reliable uh -huh. baits all across the country. Like, I know yeah. people who catch them from, again, New York to Texas to the guts of Florida on a Carolina rig yeah. and hammer big ones. So, it, it's a weird one because it does suck so bad to throw it. Like, I hate throwing the thing. But, like, yeah. just the amount of giant fish that have been caught on a Carolina rig and the consistency and able to catch those fish all throughout the year. Winter, spring, summer, super consistent. I gotta go A, man. This is, I think this is the first one going to an A category that has such a fun, a, such a low fun rating, but just for really big fish consistently and being able to throw it absolutely anywhere, I gotta go A, right? Yeah, I mean, you look at people like like Mark Davis. He's had an incredible year on MLF, and he's like 
whatever, 74 years old. Now, he's not that old, but he's, <laughs> he's getting up there. If he, if he saw this, he'd be mad at me. He's a good buddy of mine. But he only basically throws the dragon lures. Yeah. And the Carolina rig is one of those. And he had a really good Red Crest and a really good Sam Rayburn, two, yeah. two top tens in a row. Yeah. So I think there is something to be said for the usefulness. Uh, I know that they, they can be smallmouth catchers, especially when those, you know, deep crankbaits and, and you know, other offshore things for smallmouth, the tube die off. I think the Carolina rig can be effective there. And of course, we all know they catch giants on ledges and giants in brush piles. So yeah, while it's not very fun to throw, it is fun to catch fish on them. Yes, yes. I mean, there's nothing and, like that drag and it just tries to take the rod the other direction and you crack them right yeah. in the face. There's nothing. Or, like or, when you're, or when you're dragging and you keep dragging and you're like, where'd it go? Yes. <laughs> You, you keep dragging and it's like you're not catching up to it and then you got to reel really fast and then set the hook on them because they've, yeah. they've, they've knocked so much slack in your line. Yeah. So yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. You know what, for that fact, we will put the Carolina rig in the A tier. Hey. Now, I don't, th I don't think the Thunder Cricket, the next lure in our, in our uh, list, needs any other debate besides the fact that it goes in the S tier. Yeah, I'm going with that too, man. <laughs> I mean, like, dude... Honestly, when I really figured out how to fish a bladed jig, I, I, it, I've never not been able to catch a fish on it all year long. Like, it is a wild yeah. bait in that I've always got it tied on, I've always got it ready because there's always a situation I can find myself in that I go, I think I can catch one on a bladed jig here, and I can usually exactly. catch one. So, S tier for sure. Yep, there's no argument. It's around the country. It's no matter what species. I don't care if it's first week of January or first week of July. I can catch them on that in uh, here in Texas. So, mm -hmm. pretty cool little lure. All right, next one is going to be. I think this is. I think this is deep diving crankbait. Let me look at the rest of my. Yeah, this is going to be a deep diving crankbait. Your your five XDs to ten XDs level crankbait. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. This is. Uh, I'm going to give us an, an A to an S for fun, mm -hmm. but the problem comes when you look at usefulness. Yeah, that's why I almost put it with Big Worm, because it is, it is that kind of same time period. The bite can be extremely fun, especially if you find them schooled up. Um, I mean, it's just a bait that I personally have caught probably thousands of fish on a deep diving crankbait but i'm a crankbait yeah. fiend i mean i'm i'm the crankbait guy i mean that's what people know me as so i gotta go with c tier just because of the total inconsistencies any mm -hmm. other time of the year other than you know right after post spawn into you know the the deep hot parts of summer i gotta go c tier just kind of it's on the same line as that big worm and especially consistency in terms of pond fishermen, you, you can't throw a deep crankbait in 99% in of ponds. Exactly. So for, 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 for people out here watching this video, which is most likely a lot of them, yeah. uh, pond anglers can't really make advantage of this lure. So for that fact, we're going to put it in the C tier. Out in Jones Jr.'s column, me, I've got to decline his call. The next lure is one that I had so much hate for for so long but but i i started to see more pros throw it and i had, i had seen more youtubers throw it and i was like you know what this might not be just a tiny dink lure this might be a lure you can throw for big fish too and that is yeah. the drop shot and yeah. uh man my fun level on the drop shot sometimes is crazy high and sometimes is crazy low yeah yeah but, um i gotta be brutally honest here yeah I can literally count on one hand the amount of fish I've caught on a drop shot. No! Yeah, I'm not a drop shot thrower, man. And I've <sighs> never got on a good drop shot bite like up north for the smallmouth. It's always been a Ned rig deal for me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I want to learn it more. And I've definitely caught, you know, six, seven fish on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, I'm just not a... I gotta stay out of the debate on this one because I'm not a big drop shot thrower. I just you, don't you throw are, it. You are crazy. But you know what? Since you are, since you have eliminated yourself, I'm putting it in the A because uh -huh. the the fun the fun I think is a B or a C, but the usefulness and consistency, at least for me around the country, is there. Next, we're gonna have a little swim bait action. We got a few more swim baits Ooh. coming in this video, but this one is going to be uh, specifically the flashy swimmer, the Texas rigged 
you know, weighted hooked swim bait with a little bit of a uh, blade on there, little usually Colorado, mm -hmm. or usually willow leaf blade. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why I included this one. I felt like it needed its own category, but we're throwing it in there. So this is the flashy swimmer. Alex, take this, take it away. What do you think? Um, interesting, interesting for me because I, I've caught a lot of really, really big fish on swim baits that you would throw on a mm -hmm. belly weighted swim bait hook. Um, usually it's open hook, like lead head kind of stuff for ever fishing. Um, but then I've also had some, some moments where I've caught some dang big giants on it um, in very certain situations. So the fun level is up there because it's like big catcher, you know what yeah, I mean yeah. for me. Um, also the situations that I find myself throwing this bait in are really fun because it's usually like clear water, backs of creeks, yeah, yeah. you know, creek fishing, river fishing, kayak floats. And so, you know, extreme amount of fun usefulness and consistency man i would have to say that a belly weighted swim bait whether you're in a pond a great lake a river a creek a stream mm -hmm. whatever it is man you're gonna you're gonna be able to consistently catch fish on that thing especially if you can figure out you know forage and the color they're wanting yeah i mean Our dude this is this is like s or a tier for sure just because of of the ability to catch fish literally anywhere with this bait I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with an A. It's really hard to, because I, I don't throw the flashy swimmer as much as I throw the bladed jig. I don't have the experience uh, of, of, of throwing this as much, and maybe it is just as effective, but I'm going to stick it in, in A because yeah. it is fun, it is effective, it is, it is you know, consistent, but I don't think it's as much of all of those as the bladed jig. All right, now yeah. moving on. We're into some of the fun flipping and pitching mm. stuff here, at least one of them. This is, I think I only have one jig on here. So, mm. well, I, I should have put more jigs. You got two. Well, I see two. Oh, oh, oh yes. I see three. No, actually, I see four. Yeah, we got plenty of jigs. Oh, we, we, we got, got plenty okay, of jigs. Okay, we got plenty of jigs. So, <laughs> this is this is going to be the flipping jig. This here, or flipping slash, slash standard. You know, your, your dock yeah. skipping, your brush, your rock, kind of that kind of thing. Where does that yeah. jig fit in? Mm. So just a general purpose standard jig that you can do a little bit of everything with. Yeah. S tier for me, man. I mean, like yeah. you want to talk about, I've always said that there is probably no other bait in the history of fishing baits that have caught more bass, big bass, and bass consistently all across the country than a mm -hmm. jig. I agree. And so I got to go S tier. Yep, I completely agree. The normal jig, the Arky style jig, goes in the S tier. Looks like we, oh, uh oh, I moved, I moved the buzz toad. Get that back down there. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a few jigs up there in the S tier. I'm guessing after this episode. <laughs> I think so. I think and so. you know what? Let's stay. Let's stay on the on the topic. I can actually skip around here. I realized. Let's stick on the topic of jigs while we're at it. So the next jig we have on our list is gonna be the football jig. Football jig for me. Uh, I think it kind of falls in terms of fun with the with the big worm. It kind of in terms of throwing it and the the bite generally. Besides the besides when you flip the big worm, I'm talking about out deep with the big worm yeah. uh, on, on a big shaky head or something like that. I don't think it's very fun to throw. Um, and I think it's just as applicable as the big worm. Yeah, yeah. I think there's definitely some people that would like really really disagree with us on that just because of where they live in the country and how they fish yeah yeah but f for me and how i fish man like i just don't drag a jig a lot you know so yeah. i'm gonna go same i'm gonna go c tier just because of i mean it catches bigs but just for consistency all across the country and like being really accessible to a lot of different anglers yeah not super accessible to a lot of different anglers so i'm going c i agree with that one even though it's a ton of fun, and I'm sure Johnny from Fish the Moment would disagree. <laughs> yes, he, fi yes. he fishes a football jig in just about every one of his videos. Uh, yes. So sorry, sorry, Johnny. But moving on to, uh, we got one more jig or two more? Uh, looks like you've got two well, more. One, one, one kind of counts. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go with the one that really counts, the swim jig. Swim jig, I would argue, before I even explain why, I would argue S tier. I, and, and, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm gonna agree, man. Swim jig is that's a powerful bait right there. If you because it, it it, there's so many different applications, and I figured out things with the swim jig to do, especially with certain shaped head swim jigs 
that have m turned it into a bait that went from something I throw just a few months out of the year to something I can throw pretty much all year mm -hmm. and, and get bites on it. Exactly. And of course, living in Texas, I got a little a little more consistent warm weather than you do. But I, mm -hmm. I can even find places to, to catch them on a swim jig. And <coughs> even, even if I was to look at maybe the one month that I don't throw a swim jig all that often for the effectiveness of it, uh, I think that the other... 10 to 11 months at least that i fish it can make up for the fact that it's not super effective then and the fun yeah. factor and the usefulness factor that there's really no other lure that can get fish that that want a reaction bait that can get in and out of that cover a spinner bait the blades get caught up a vibrating jig a square bill they both get caught up a swim jig is the only one that can go through pads and shallow bushes with maybe maybe the again the soft plastic swim bait on the on the belly weighted hook but mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that has near the effectiveness of a swim jig. So S tier. Look at that jig pile up going on up there. <laughs> Beautiful. It's the prettiest thing I've seen in weeks. Alright, now the last jig on our list is going to be a hair jig. And this is I, I guess I did not include the preacher jig, the big offshore jigs, because I feel like that is not very widely thrown. That would I think that would almost belong in C to D if we had it on here. Because yeah. it's so ineffective for so many people. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, I throw it like twice a year. <laughs> yeah, so. I throw it, yeah. A handful of times a year. No, it, like, I, can, I, I need to know that they're really, really there to pick that thing up. And the hair jig, this is a small little, you know, tiny, uh, not bucktail, what's this called? Marabou, little marabou hair mm -hmm. jig. And I included mm -hmm. this because... I've caught bass on it from Texas to Minnesota to New York to Canada. So that's why I included it on here. Have you thrown it much, Alex? Man, not a whole lot. I've thrown it with Ben when I'm in Michigan trying to, like, intercept big cruising pre-spawners. Yeah. Um, outside of that, no. I don't have the gear or the rod and reel set up. Like, you know, Ben Ben talks uh -huh. about he, Ben ties them. And, and, you know, he ties a certain kind of hook and uses a certain kind of rod and reel and line just because of you know he's using a real light wire hook and so it's not something i've done a ton that mm -hmm. way now i'll throw a wrench in your plan here i will throw a marabou jig though on a float and fly okay and um you want to talk about giants but only a certain time of year you know okay. i'm talking about dead of winter kind of fishing and so for me it's not fun. <laughs> it's inconsistent as far as throughout the entire year. And for his like accessibility to most anglers, it's not there either. So I'm going to have to put it, I would say for me, D tier. But I know yeah. for you it's going to be completely different. Well, it's not completely different because I only have a few more applications. I've caught a few largemouth and stuff in the lights at night with a white one. I've also caught them throwing it up in marinas that are that are feeding yeah. on tiny little tiny bait fish. So I am going to go with C just because I have a little more applications for it. But yeah. uh, it's it's riding the border between C and D, I think. Yes. Yeah, it is. I think that's a very uh, that's a niche of a niche when it comes to bass fishing right there. For sure. All right. We are moving and grooving, folks. If you're enjoying this video, hit the subscribe button. Of course, I mentioned Alex has a YouTube channel. Go subscribe to it if you hadn't. I'm sure I would have had a little subscribe thing for him earlier on in the video. But Alex is just making making good videos over in Tennessee. And so if you're in his neck of the woods, I'm sure his videos are going to be a little more applicable to your current bass fishing situation. Next lure on our list is going to be the soft plastic jerkbait. Oh, Yo, is... I'm gonna, mm. on, on three, we're going to say... Where this belongs. Think, think for a second. Okay. All right. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one, two, three, go. All right. Okay. One, two, three. S. A. Ah. Man. Dude, I want to say S. I almost said S, but let me tell you why I said A and not S. Okay. Because dead of winter around here, I couldn't get a bite on that thing. Um. And I know for most people in most parts of the country, really cold weather, unless you're doing like very specific things with that bait, which totally takes it out of the category of soft jerk bait. Okay. But like, as far as pond fishing, summer fishing, pre-spawn and post-spawn fishing, yeah. and just a freaking ton of fun to watch them come up behind that thing and eat it, I gotta go A, but for just consistency for everybody, yeah, it's not, it's not tapping that S right yet. 
I guess, you know what, I'll, I'll agree with you. And the more that I think about it and compare it to the swim jig, the swim jig is infinitely more fun to throw. Mm -hmm. So even though the swim jig has the same effectiveness, there's a few months you can't throw it, uh, I think that, yeah, you're right. The swim jig still takes a, an S for me, and the A gives the A goes to the soft plastic jerk bait. It's a fun bite, though, man. God, it's a it good is. Time. Dude. I mean, we that's what we did when you came uh -huh. up here last time is we couldn't find them doing the river deal. And so I said, you want to go catch them on a fluke? And you were like, you dang skippy. And so that's what we went and did. Yeah, and it works. It's, I mean, it's an effective lure. It yes, is, it's very it effective. It is very effective, especially the post bomb, the chasing bluegills. Yes, oh, yes. Man, Just, it, is, it is a good one. All right, now speaking of a lure that's not very effective, we're going to go with the flutter spoon. Man, big fish, big fish. Oh, That's, oh yes, huge ones. When I think when I think flutter spoon, I think giants. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can think of again a handful of times that I've like really, really cracked their face in with a flutter spoon. Um, I wouldn't say that it's D tier, but I would definitely say that it's C tier because it yeah. falls in line with kind of just that. Man, it's not accessible to a lot of anglers. I mean, dude, I've mm -hmm. tried to fish a flutter spoon in a kayak. It ain't happening. Yeah, and there's no there's no pond that you can pick up a flutter spoon and, and go catch them. So that's true. That's true. Yeah, I'm going C tier. Let's, for let's, let's go with C. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. It doesn't belong in D because the fun factor is there. Yes, uh, but it, it, it is very ineffective for most folks. All right, let's see. What other lures should we just eliminate? Which which one do you want? Mm, uh, let's do the punch and rig. The punch rig. Okay. Punch rig, for you guys who don't know, is a, is a flipping rig for heavy vegetation. It's a heavy weight, and you punch through the grass to get in to where those fish live. And I think it's really fun. Especially it's probably I, next to frog, next in this order. These are the three things that I, <laughs> if I could do it all year long and not catch them any other way, a frog, a square bill, a punch rig. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love a punch rig bite i i love to crack fish's faces wide open with something mm -hmm. and so punch rig you can do that that happens about three months out of the year here though yeah yeah <laughs> so we've we've got it for a few more months than you do but i think yeah. for the fact that it's so fun i think it still belongs in a what do you think it's just inconsistent though man i mean like Pond fishermen can't do it. Doing it in a kayak is dang near impossible. Okay, okay. Um, you think it slides all the way down to B? I'm going to have to put it in B because, like, if you look at dudes from Florida and California, so they do it for an extended period of time. So do you guys down in Texas, Louisiana, that area. Yeah. When you get up here this part of the country, we have, like, a segment of time that we do it, but you can catch really giant fish on it, and it's extremely fun. Okay. And so I'm, I'm going to put it with B because it's kind of like the Alabama rig and the fact that just because there's – it's not as much like a – law factor around uh, around this bait because mm -hmm. it's not multi-hooked what it is it's like a culture factor like the culture around punching in certain parts of the country is completely different than others and yeah, so you're yeah. going to see more consistency around this bait in certain areas than others and see a lot of success so i'm going and, b tier and i'll agree with you and also with the gear it takes a certain yeah. heavy heavy rod heavy braid i mean tungsten weights themselves can be like eight yeah. bucks an ounce and eight bucks for yeah. a weight so yeah, yeah, it's definitely similar to A rig. It's got that barrier to entry. And you know what? I think we're, I want to throw the the glide bait in there with category B. What do you think? I yeah, man. I mean, that's something that I've got a lot of experience with, but that's something I've dedicated an extreme amount of time to. And I'll be honest, I've seen a lot more fish than I've caught. And oh, oh yes, yeah, way more. I, and it's dude, so much fun, so much fun to see him try to eat that thing. But all at the same time, man, just. Kind of like the Alabama rig, the punch rig, cultural, gear-wise, consistency for everybody. It's going to be such a different ball game for every person that looks at that. Exactly. Some of these people are so. going to be swim bait aficionados, and they want to put it in the S tier. And some people have never thrown it. They're going to liken it to the banjo minnow. So I think it fits right in there with C. Yep. Yep. And, uh, man, we are we are chugging along. Hopefully y'all are enjoying are. this video. I think this is kind of going to be like a podcast form format. You know, people are going to set this thing as they do their dishes and, and uh, do their laundry as they kind of hear us ramble about <laughs> certain yeah. certain lures. Let's uh, let's keep knocking some off here. What's, what's with no fun? I think the grub is no fun. Yeah, man, that's just... 
<laughs> a lot of a lot of big fish have been caught on a grub, and there's old yeah. men around here with. I, I always this is funny because the grub's a funny one. They got a 20 foot bow on their line. They're in a flat bottom boat with a cigarette burnt down all the way to the filter. But every <laughs> time that you fish against them in a tournament, they come in with five absolute giants, and they caught them all just dragging a grub on the bottom. But man, like dragging a grub on the bottom. Oh yeah, dude, that's a thing around here. Dragging a grub. Gotcha. Yeah, dragging it like a football jig. But man, that's sucky fishing. So I'm going C tier all day long with that one because I just I can't. I can't even. So. Yeah. You know, you mentioned dragging a grub. Most people around me don't drag it. They put it on a little jig head like a swim bait. Really? And just and, reel it around? I mean, I, I grew up reeling around for crappie and white bass and really anything that would bite. And there's been times, even in the winter here in Texas, when a grub just catches them better than a little, than a little you know, uh, paddle tail swim bait. Huh. But, again, I just think it belongs in C. Yeah, I'm going for C. What, for, what, for whatever reason. I, I think the fun factor draws it down for me. Uh... And also consistency. It's effective, but it's not consistent. So yeah, let's go with C. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, what else? Let's go with the uh, let's go with the tube. Dude, the tube. Okay, so tube is special. Let me tell you about the tube special. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna broaden this to jo to all tubes. This is a flipping tube. This yeah. is a smallmouth tube. This is a tube category in general. Where does this land for you? Man, I, you're gonna you're gonna be like you are nuts, but this is the truth. I'm going I'm going B tier with this one and let me tell you why. Because that tube, like you just said, can be broadened out into so many different categories. And there okay. are times around me that and it's in this will happen same as around you and it happens in ponds. I've caught fish in ponds with that thing. I've caught them flipping it. I've caught them dragging it behind a Carolina rig. I've mm -hmm. caught them, you know, with just an open tube hook up north in Michigan. I mean, my, my PB smallmouth was held on a tube until last year when I beat it on the old Deadly Nedley. Um, but, dude, I'm, I'm going B tier all day long with that bait because it is a, it's a straight fish catcher. Then, then why, if you just mentioned the fact that it's a straight fish catcher, is consistent, you've caught it in ponds, whatever, why is it not an A? I would go it's not an A because it's not a bait that everybody is going to look at and pick up and go, I can go catch fish on this about anywhere. Okay. And so I think, I mean, for me and my experiences, I could throw it into an A category. But for other fishermen's experiences and like just a broad spectrum of anglers that may be watching this video, I personally don't know anybody that throws a tube down here super consistently. Whereas yeah. I've always, like, in the summer, in the spring, I've got a flipping tube ready to go. Yep, I agree. I think if you were to ask someone like, uh, maybe like Ben, who throws a tube a lot more, or someone like my buddy Alton Jr., who throws or a tube. And Wesley Strader. So Wesley Strader is the man to ask yes. about flipping a tube. You want to talk about something that he does that not a lot of people associate him with? Flipping a tube is something that dude does all the time and cracks giants on it. But for us, you still want to land this in a B. Yeah, Bub, I'm going to go with a B. I mean, okay. a B is B is kind of like it's kind of turned into this special category of like weird stuff that not everybody does, and you need special gear. But I think yeah, the, yeah. I think the tube still falls there just because of it's not something that everybody. Maybe after this video, people will be like, I got to pick up some tubes and go try them out. But like, it's just yeah. not a not a super consistent. It's an awesome bait, gets big bites, but not a super consistent yeah. thing I always throw. I can agree with that. Yeah. There's times when it works real well, but uh, again, maybe we're thinking a lot about public perception here, and a lot of people don't think about the tube still as a viable fish catcher for all situations. It yeah. is, but even I don't throw it in, in, in a lot of situations I should. So yeah. Yeah. For that reason, tube is in the B. Uh, let's, uh, let's stick with flipping. Let's go with the... I, this here is a rage bug or whatever it's called. S tier structure bug. But yeah, I, S -tier. I, we're gonna go not just with this specific lure, but with the the category of you know flipping creature bait. I'm gonna have to go with S tier. As S tier well. all day, every day, every single day, uh, dude. I've caught more fish. The only thing I've caught more fish on is a crankbait. Right under that is is a yeah. Texas rigged mm -hmm. creature bait. You know, beaver style bait, something flipping it, dude. S tier all day long. And you can throw it on a Carolina rig. You can put it on the back of 
either one of these jigs on mm -hmm. our S tier list as a trailer, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's one of the most versatile lures out there. And if you're not throwing this thing right there, you should be. I'll leave it linked in the description below. Yes. It's a, it's a fish catcher. Nothing else to say about that one. And uh, sticking with lures that are fish catchers all around, let's go with the stick bait. The old Sanko. What, what are we thinking? Dude, I'm S tier on this one. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, like, I can't. I mean, dude, it used to be a bait that I despised throwing until I figured out, like, like really how it aligns with my fishing style. And once I figured it out, I was like, there's nothing really quite like the old stick bait. I mean, nothing. No, there's not. Nothing. It is, uh, it is a fish catcher no matter where you go in the country and no matter which way you rig it. It can be worked in 200 feet of water for spotted bass like Cody Meyer does, and it can be worked in six inches of water for a spawning bass. So, yep. I mean, it's... Uh, it's just really good. Yeah. And boat. Really, really good. Boat, bank, kayak, pond, creek, river, it don't matter. You have that thing tied on, you're going to catch fish somewhere. Yep. I totally agree. Uh, let's see. What else should we got? Let's stick Let's let's stick with the worm category here. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's save some of these for later. Okay. Uh, let's go with the, the jerk bait. <sighs> the hard, the hard jerk bait. And I'm going to start off with this one. Let's just kind of go back to our categories here. I think they're incredibly fun to fish, mm -hmm. personally. I've fallen in love with, with the action of, of jerking the jerk bait and the different ways, you know, working it up to keep it higher in the water column and down. I feel like as anglers, we're supposed to visualize what's going on down there with our lures. We're supposed to, you know, be the fish or mm -hmm. be the lure. Mm -hmm. And I think a jerk bait, a jerk bait along with a frog and maybe a, a, a flipping jig of some kind or punch rig really allows me to like envision myself as the lure. Mm -hmm. And for that, for that fact, my mind is usually occupied with the lure. I'm not like daydreaming. Like when I, when I throw a Cinco out there, I'm thinking about everything else besides the Cinco. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when I, when I'm throwing a jerk bait, I'm like, all right, this could be the jerk that I get one. I am and the so, jerk bait. I am the jerk bait. So for that reason, I think the fun factor is high. I think if you look at the pro tours and, guys that throw a jerk bait if it, if the water's not dirty no matter what time of the year it is guys are guys are catching them on that thing so and even even a lake even a lake you follow for red crest the water was dirty and dustin connell won on one yeah so i, I think with I, here's my here's my my personal yeah. view on the jerk bait i made a video most consistent baits of 2020 and i do it every year i make a video and i go back i look at all my fish catches and so my buddy, who you know I fish with quite a bit, he texted me without watching the video, and he said, "Let me guess, a jerk bait and a square bill." And I was like, or he said, "A jerk bait, a square bill, and a stick bait," in that order. And I was like, "I'll be honest with you, yeah, it's it's pretty much yeah. that order." I mean, dude, the jerk bait is S tier all day long for me. Um, yeah, I, I, it may not be the most accessible bait to every single angler, but I think it's because people don't have confidence in it. And a jerk bait, totally. a jerk bait is a, it can catch giants, it can catch numbers. I've caught them in the kayak, off the bank, from the boat. I've even caught them in ponds on a jerk bait. So I got to go S tier. Mm -hmm. I agree, and especially you look at the effectiveness of live scope with with a jerk bait. I don't think, unless small, unless we're talking pitching a drop shot or a Ned rig out there for smallmouth and live scope, there's no better lure for catching them on live scope than a jerk bait. It's yep. just, you can you can see fish suspended, reel your lure down there and jerk it past their face and they oftentimes will turn and follow that thing and eat it. Yep. So I think it's up there in the S tier. Now, another one that uh, deserves no talking about is the hollow belly frog we're gonna put that in the s right now absolutely amen 1000 <laughs> percent, dude like not not even a debate on everything about that that bait even though it isn't no, like not a bait that we catch them on in the winter um i figured out frog fishing where it's literally consistent for me from the time the water hits 55 to the time it goes back down to 55 so yeah it's, it's really fun, and of course the fun factor I think overrides any of the consistency that it lacks. Yep. It overrides it with the fun. Yes. Because <laughs> it is it is a heck of a ton of fun. And I guess, I don't know why I put two frogs on here, but the popping frog, just as much, baby. Put it up in there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Frogs are frogs are frog. <laughs> I, they're all in the same category for me. Now, speaking of poppers, now we have a hard plastic popper with some treble hooks. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
I'm gonna have to put that one, if I look at, you know, it's got the same fun in, in, in my mind as, well, not the same fun of set the hook. You can't set the hook as hard with a, with a popper, you'll bend the hooks out. But I think it does have the same fun mental side of, oh my gosh, explosion on the popper, but it doesn't have the same effectiveness yeah. as, as the hollow bellied top water popper. Yeah. I, I, I gotta go, this is a hard one. I gotta go B tier because I've never yep. I've never had an immense amount of success with a popper over something like a frog. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with where I'm fishing, how I'm fishing. So I gotta go mm -hmm. B tier, but I, I'm up for debate on that. Uh, yeah, I think it's not near as fun to uh, set the hook and reel that fish in. Usually, it's not on. And it's, it's not. It's never in a heavy cover situation, so there's never any tense situations of like. Uh, you know, oh, I gotta get the fish out of there. Mm -hmm. Rare, very rarely will I get a popper fish in a rough situation. So yeah, I think it deserves in B. And if you look at the A lures, it's not near as effective as as the drop shot in the Carolina rig and the the soft plastic trick yeah. bait. It's just not near as effective as those. So we're gonna stick that in there on the B tier. It looks like things are kind of evening out. Yeah, well, I'm I'm su I'm surprised that we're not throwing everything in just one category. That, yeah, that goes to show you because when when we make videos on any of these lures. We have a blast fishing those lures, and you think yeah. we put them all in the S tier. Yeah. But as as we co as we compare them to one another, we realize that some of them we like a lot more than others. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and and staying in the topwater category to knock out all the topwaters, we have the plopper. And again, I think this this deserves to go in B. I think it is a little bit higher fun yeah. than the pop than a popper is. But unless you think it should go in A, what do you think? Hmm. I, for me, I've, I've kind of figured out a Whopper Plopper um, and, and how it works for me around here. And I know that the Whopper Plopper kind of changed the topwater fishing game for a lot of people. Yeah. I would put it in A for my experiences, but I can definitely see, see where it would fall in B just because of inconsistencies around the bite. Okay. So... I think B is a solid place to put that. And and also, a lot of people still haven't figured out how to throw it. They I haven't, mean, you yeah. can catch you you can catch them just winding it in, but there's a lot of nuance to it, yeah. and that's the, the same argument we made for the tube. Yeah. That a lot of people don't think of it as a lure you can catch them on everywhere. So I'm gonna go with B for the plopper. Oh, we actually we have one more top water, and that is the top water walking bait, the <sighs> one that goes back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna have to go A for that. Yeah, I gotta agree, man. It's uh, definitely not as effective as a frog in some situations, but it's still a top water, and so I gotta go A. Yep, and I think it, it's more effective than yeah. the plopper in the popper. Yeah, for sure. Which is why, which is why it belongs in A. Like we said, though, all top waters are definitely gonna be above C. Yes. They're gonna, they're fun. They're fun. Yeah. But uh, we we gotta make sure they fit in with the rest of the categories. Absolutely. All right, we got a few lures left. Those of y'all who have listened to the whole thing, man, we are having a blast right now. Uh, we got two crankbaits left, one of which being a lipless crankbait and one mm. being the square bill. Which one do you want to knock off first? Let's do the square bill because I am going to just go ahead and say S tier square bill. That's just the way it's got to be, and I will fist fight anybody that disagrees with me. Well, you better fist fight me because I just don't agree. I, I've made videos in the past where I said the square bill was my favorite lure. And I've just, uh, I've learned to change. I think, I, I, per, I know, you can, you can say what you want or what you will. I have just found <coughs> that the square bill is not near as effective in so many scenarios. The fun factor, I think, is there. It's a Dude, pretty do you fun know, lure. I've caught enough five pounders on a square bill to fill this entire <laughs> room up. <laughs> like, that hurts me, okay? Like, I'm talking, that square bill... I would knock the swim jig out for the square bill. That's how serious I am about that bait. Okay, okay, but let's think about the effectiveness for pond anglers that have like, and even, and even grass fishermen. It's not as effective a lure around grass. I sure, you it, can snap. I fish it around you, grass. <laughs> like, I'm that guy though. I'm that guy that will tie a square bill on 20 pound fluorocarbon and hold my rod tip up and get them to react out of grass on it. Okay, okay. And so, like, I think I think the problem with the square bill is that people don't see it as the 4x4 four four of the fishing world and the actual mm. effectiveness of it when you really learn how to use your rod, reel, and line all in unison with that square bill 
and you learn how yeah. to switch hooks out on it, dude, when you start to really dig into the square bill, there's a reason KVD has won probably more money on a lipless, a square bill, and a jerk bait than anybody else. It's because it's like it's it works. It just works. Yeah, you're you're probably right. And I maybe I haven't put enough time into figuring out the nuances of the square bill. Uh, but I I still have to rank it where I want to rank it and and I'm, I'm, let's I'm gonna get mad I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm <laughs> we're gonna fight I'm I'm gonna have to put the square bill in the A tier and and the reason I do that is because of you I just I, I don't want to get in too big of a fist fight I I, I kind of want to put it in B. But uh, I'm going to put it in, in A just to make you a little bit happier. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. That worked for you? Yes, that's good. Okay. Well, put the, put the square bill there. And, and maybe for me and the people watching this, this is a challenge to us from Alex to pick up a monster bass Alex Rudd colored square bill and go to, <laughs> go to, go to slay enough. So the next crankbait on our list, and actually the last crankbait on our tier list, is going to be the lipless crankbait. And uh, I... I'm not Dude, sure to be honest. Listen, listen. Since you put square bill in A tier, the lipless is going right there with it, and I'm not, I'm not going to budge on that one. But it's, it's so, it's so efficient though, like everywhere. Yeah. So is a square bill, but hey, you want to play, you want to play silly games with me? Go win silly prizes. Put the lipless okay. up in A tier. Okay. No, nah, dude. I mean, the lipless is, it is such a consistent bait, right? I mean, it catches yeah, a ton yeah. of big fish. But I think for me. I think what's funny more than anything is you look at these tiers and S tier really shows what kind of anglers we both are and what we like to do the most and where we find the most fun and the most consistency because of the kind of lures that they are. Of course. Yeah. Now, now it, it does show what we like to do. It also shows that this, this was not just D to S as according to us. This was efficiency and and cons what, what was the other the word that we used? Consistency across the country. And, and usefulness. And usefulness, yes. I think we started throwing efficiency in there at some point. But yeah. I think, yeah, for, for we got to think about other people, not just ourselves as well for some of these yeah. lures. That they're effective for pond anglers. And I would put the lipless in S, but you know what? If, if we're going to play silly games, then we'll put that down there in A. Now, a few more lures. We'll stick with, uh, stick with moving bait. For, actually, you know what? We're gonna leave this one to the end just to to appease my to appease some of my older my older viewers. Uh -huh. uh, and not and older. I don't mean older in, uh, in terms of age. I mean people who watched the channel for a while. The All OGs, right, gonna, as we like to say. The OG, we're, we got one lure in here for the OGs. Uh, we're gonna go with the paddle tail swim bait, the Kitek, the Rage Swimmer, whatever you want to call it, Brent Kleenex name. And this one is so versatile that I almost have to put it in S. Man, I got to put it flashy swimmer because that's how I fish it most okay. often. Um, I got to put it in A, even though it is super effective. The thing is, you put it on an Alabama rig. You can put it on a lead head. You can fish it unweighted. Um, you can put it on the back of a swim jig. You can put it on the back of a jig and put it on the back of a bladed jig. Yeah, yeah. Very versatile. Very versatile. You know what? Let's go S. I want to go S with this one just because now that I've said all those things out loud, it makes me just think that, you know what? That is probably one of the most consistent baits of all time. Yep, it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't care where you are in the country. I don't care what time of the year it is. It catches bass. And is it fun? Yes. Eh, not really. It's, it's, it's kind of yeah. kind of a bland lure. It, it can be a fun bite. It's mostly a, a cast and wind lure. But the effectiveness of it and the, the versatility... And I think for the usefulness and consistency, as we're judging, I, for all anglers, I think it has to go up in the S tier. I agree. I agree. We got three more. Let's go with the Deadly Nedley. The, the old, old Deadly Ned Rig. Nedley. Love it. Right here. Now, you, you, I have some success there. You obviously have much more of a love for the Ned Rig, so you talk about that. Man, the Ned Rig has showed itself um, over the past few years for Alex Rudd. I've really figured out how to use it, where to use it, what to throw it on, and I've kind of figured the bait out. Um, I've caught giant smallmouth in Michigan. My PB smallmouth of 586 came on a Ned Rig. Um, I've caught giant largemouth on it down here fishing the river current. I've caught them in creeks. I've caught them in ponds. I've caught them everywhere. i got to go S tier because consistency. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Consistency, 
Availability to normal angers, the ability to throw it anywhere and get bites on it. You can throw it in a boat from the bank, in a kayak, in rivers, creeks, streams, and lakes. You can go to the biggest lakes in the world in the Great Lakes, or you can go to the little bitty ponds in your neighbor's backyard. You tie on a Ned rig. I promise you, you're going to put a fish in the boat with it. All the year long. I the, the problem, I know, I know it's consistent. <laughs> the problem I have with you putting it in nests is that it's... For the most part, they make hooks that are. For the most part, it's not even close to being weedless. Yeah, but man, that's like saying a, like that's like saying that a rage bug isn't weedless. It depends on how you rig it and what you're rigging it on. Okay, you're not. You, you, but nobody's putting a rage bug on an exposed jig head. I actually know guys who do that, but oh, that's okay. aside well, the fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here that's we can get, an dude. We can get into some minutia here. Because there's yeah. baby rage bugs that I fish as, as Ned rigs, quote unquote, on Ned heads. Okay. And okay. and there's big Ned rigs that I Texas rig and I flip. Wait, wouldn't so, that just be a Senko at that point? No, because they're because they're the floating, like they're actually the oh. last tech material and they float. Got it. Okay. So I don't know, man. Like you start getting into some minutia here, like about. Like, are we talking about Ned Rig as a traditional Ned Rig with an exposed hook and a small do-nothing plastic on the back? Is that what we're saying? Or are we saying all the varieties within the family of Ned Rigs now? I think we have to talk about all the varieties because we've applied that standard elsewhere. Then I got to go S tier because of that. Because, dude, you can Texas rig it on certain heads and you can put it in grass. Look at Mikey Balls. Mikey Balls yeah, is a yeah. great example of somebody who's taken that thing and figured out how to use it in Florida and everywhere in the country and catches giants. I will cave. I will cave and I will put it in S tier. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just for you. You're, you're my Just man. for you. You know, I, I will agree with a lot of those points. And I think it, similar to the to the square bill, if I put a little more time with the net rig, I think I might find a little more effectiveness and you know in usefulness to it. So yeah. we got two more. We're gonna go with the shaky head. With your this is this is now by shaky head. I'm not talking about even well even though we did apply the standard a second ago. I'm talking about your standard finesse worm shaky head. Yeah. This isn't yeah. your big. This isn't your big offshore shaky head. This is yeah. the one you throw on a spin a spinning rod yeah. around you know, rocks and, and kind of your, your mid-depth water range. Yeah. Where do you think the shaky head sits? Man, before the advent of the Ned Rig, the shaky head was my Ned Rig. Um, mm -hmm. And, dude, I... Uh, hundreds, not if not thousands of fish on the shaky head. Um, consistency, you can throw it anywhere. You can throw it in anything, depending on the size yeah. of the head, the size of the worm. I mean... Dude, you're talking about something you can tie on literally anywhere in the country and put fish in the boat. Yep. I gotta say S tier. I mean, S tier's filling I, up. Me too. That's an S tier bait, man. I, I know it is. And so I think you can have both the Ned Rig and the and the Shaky Head in S tier. I don't think there's 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 room on the couch for both of them. So we're yes. gonna put them both up there. Yes, there is. Okay. And man, as we as we look over this. This wondrous tier list. I can't help but think that we left one lure off. And one beautiful lure. One, well, one, one lure um, that that for so long on my channel has has had a, a history. And man, oh, hold up, one sec, folks. Our phone call disconnected with Alex. You know what? The fish, the fish lords didn't want us to talk about this lure. They wanted our phone call to be cut off. They said no more on no more on the spinnerbait. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it in D tier. Thank you guys so much for Whoa! watching this episode. Hold on just a second, son. <laughs> hurting a man, hurting a lot of men right here. Oh, uh, how do I take it out? Can I take it out? I can't take it out. Well, uh, well I kind of wanted to end the video there, but we will talk about the spinnerbait. Yeah. For so long, I hated the spinnerbait. I thought that it was it was dumb. I, I have made apology videos to it. I have qualified for national champions on it, and so uh, championships. So I've I've recently had some some love for the spinnerbait, and I've realized that it fits in a category that the swim jig could also fit in that category. And, and the swim jig is even a little bit more uh, weedless than the spinnerbait is. But if those fish want something flashy and uh, in their face and loud, and especially in dirty water, spinnerbait is just a, an absolute killer. So. Yeah. I hesitate to put it in S because all the OG fans out there would think that I've I've totally 
shifted my mindset, but what do you think? I mean, dude, if you're going to put a square bill and a lipless and a walk the dog style bait in A, then I think spinnerbait lives right there with all of them. Yep, we're going to put spinnerbait up there in the A tier. There you go, man. Well, what, what a time. This is a great list. And I've had a blast. Have you had fun, Alex? I do. This has been a ball. Like, I'm a, I may do this on a live stream here soon and just, like, bring people on and debate with them about things. I mean, this is awesome. That would be really fun. Well, of course, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a break from the normal, but I thunk... But I thunk... <laughs> I thunked it. I, I thunked it. <laughs> I thunked it up. And I think that uh, it's, it's good sometimes to mix it up. And I've had this video brewing in my head for a while, and I thought it'd be fun to do it by myself but it'd be even more fun to do it with somebody who might have different experiences than I do with lures where they live in the country. So again, if you guys have not subscribed to Alex Rudd's channel, hopefully you've had as much fun as he and I did, and trust me, his channel is just as much fun as this video is. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, if you stumbled upon this, and maybe you're not even a fisherman, you found yourself watching tier lists, and you were watching Cody Co. and H3 Productions, and then you stumbled upon this video talking about fishing lures. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers, and of course, I have instructional videos on almost every single one of the lures on this list, and if I don't, I will by the end of this year and or the next year. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time on TRF.